some absolutely amazing ideas. This is time. yeah, this is an idea that I thought of recently, by the way. Um, and this is like my favorite idea, actually. But I don't know if you guys will understand it because I don't know if it's over there. Do you guys uh, have Anytime Fitness, the gym? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do go to the gym. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah, Anytime Fitness is actually, um, it stands out because, uh, you, I mean, do you have specifically that gym, the gym called Anytime Fitness? No, no, just uh, another gym in my area. Okay, okay, so there's a gym called Anytime Fitness that's over here. Um, I don't know how big it is worldwide, but it, it's, from a business perspective, it's really, it's simultaneously the best and the worst gym at the same time. It has unbelievable potential, but the company itself is like hanging by a thread right now. It's like in, you know, a lot of trouble. And the main benefit to Anytime Fitness is how many of them there are. It's literally the, uh, like the biggest gym in the world for how many locations it has. It has like thousands and thousands of locations. Um, and it's the one I go to because I, I like to travel a lot. And so everywhere I go in the United States, has an Anytime Fitness. And I go to a lot of places that don't have a lot of other gyms, but every place has an Anytime Fitness. And most people won't know about like this unless they knew that. Um, it's also like, the thing about it is it's 24 seven. It never closes on holidays or anything like that. It never closes. And a lot of times employees are not even there. See employees, they work there like nine to five or whatever, and then they clock out, they leave, right? But if you sign up for a membership, you get a key card yourself. So you can go in whenever you want. If you wanted to go in at, at 3 a.m. on a holiday where nobody's working there, you could just scan your key card at the door and you're in. And that's the whole idea behind it. So it's like a, each gym is like a small location, relatively small. It has like only the essentials, only the things that you need, but it's a little more expensive than the other ones because there's so many of them. And the, what I would do is I would pitch them like, because they need it. They need it right now. They need some help. I would consult with them because I go there and I see the problems and I would tell them like, hey, give me some shares of the company or something like that. And I would tell them what they needed to be successful. And really what it is, is they just need more methods of monetization. Like, first of all, it needs to be easier to sign up. Um, and I, like, I don't know if you guys know about like these things, but like, I'll just run through my ideas anyways. Like they, they have... Um, large sign-up bonuses where you get discounts. They, they don't need to have that. They can just get rid of it. They can just make it easier to sign up because it's very difficult to sign up. You can't sign up through the app or anything like that. Um, also, when you sign up, the, the gym that you specifically sign up at is the only one you can go to for the first month. And then after that, you can go to any other Anytime Fitness in the United States. Um, they need to get rid of that. They need to make it so that you can go to any and there's not like a you know home gym that you're tied to uh, they need to capitalize off of the fact, here's what they need to do. They need to capitalize off of the fact that this gym isn't just any time. It's also anywhere. That's their biggest selling point, And they don't capitalize off of that. They don't ever think about using that to make any money. Like if I can go to any time fitness and I can, um, hold up, you're echoing. So yeah, uh, drowned whale. Drowned whale. Yeah. Yeah, you're echoing, I think. Like my voice is my voice is echoing on yours. Oh, really? Sorry. So like, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay. So like, if I go into an anytime fitness, right? What I can do right now is I can. There's like a fridge there, and I can write my name on the fridge and take out an energy drink, and it'll be charged to my account which is a really good idea to make more money. But there's an, there's a vending machine in there that I can't do it for. And there's also a place where they have like microwavable meals that it uses a different system. I have to use, I have to pay Venmo to a QR code to do that and, and write my name as well. And the way they do it is an employee comes and they find your name and somebody could just write somebody else's name and just take it. And they have to check the cameras and do all this stuff and it just costs so much money. All they have to do is just their company is so like, it's run by all old people. They don't understand software. All they have to do is ditch the, like the, you know, writing your thing, your name on a clipboard and just use the key card altogether. Just use the key card for everything. Let people pay for it. Actually, you don't even need a key card. 
you let people pay for it using the app on their phone, like the the yeah. NFC or whatever on their app. I don't know, but an app it's, it's that would. Yeah, that, their app is terrible. Their app is garbage and tons of people have it. It's like the most popular gym app in the world and it's also the worst one. All they need to do is they have to add a dark mode. Literally, if they add a dark mode, it, it'll cost them like, what, $3,000 to develop a very good dark mode, like a really good dark mode, like $3,000 to their already existing app and boom, that's like tens of thousands of dollars of more customers because you know they already have so many and they'll like going on the app. Also, there's they could have like a way to track your progress, like stored within the phone. Every time you scan your phone at the door, you go in. Every time you leave, it checks that you've left uh, based on your location. And then you could track your progress, how much you've been going to the gym. People would love that as a part of the app, you know? Um, and none of this stuff is a part of the apps. And because it's all on the phone, you could have like QR codes for all these things. Like, let's say you're taking something out of the fridge, right? You don't need to have an employee come and find your name on the thing and read your handwriting and, you know, uh, charge your card and all that stuff. No, it, it could just be tied to the app. It could just be on the app. You set your payment method on there and then you go to the fridge and you go, oh, I want this protein shake or whatever, right? I want this protein bar or whatever. And then there's a QR code. You scan the QR code using your app. It charges your account, whatever it is. And then boom, it, that's simple. Automated system. They'd make so much more money. And the thing is, because of the system, because the employees like, have to do this and they have to check the cameras and they know each person personally, I can only do it at the home gym that I made my account at. I can't go to a different state and do this app. They're losing money because they refuse to make the software. And then, you know, if your phone is dead, they could like sell the key cards for people to like open the doors. That way they can, you know, get in, um, you know, if their phone is dead or whatever, they can at least get into the gym, you know, after hours while there's no one there. And you can still get in when there's an employee there, but like, a lot of people go when there's no employee. I go very late at night when there's no employees and there's like barely anybody there. Um, but yeah, that's like, they just need to find more ways to monetize. They can have personal trainers and they can have fight clubs, which are illegal, but you know, still people do it. Um, like swimming classes and like dance classes and all the other stuff that all the other gyms do. They just have to do all of it. And they have so many gyms to where if they implemented it, it would be so much more lucrative for them than it would be for any of these other gyms. And this is also like a real estate play because um, they can advertise because they have so many locations because like they can allow for billboards to be built on their property, right? They can allow for easements for billboards and billboards are so lucrative. They would cover like, you know, the entire rent of the entire building. And if they own the land, they wouldn't even need to pay rent. Like if you, you know, um, McDonald's literally has more value. Their company owns more, uh, like assets in real estate than they do in restaurants because like these companies, when they grow to that size, they realize the real big plays are not in like the business on the real estate. It's in the real estate itself. Like Bill Gates, he used to own a bunch of like, uh, server spaces and all this stuff. And then he, now he's like taking all the money that he earns from like uh, Azure and all that, and just buying a ton of farmland. He's literally the largest farmland owner in the United States. Like all these massive plays with all these businesses that, that reach that size, they all turn to real estate. Like they have to own the property and all these um, anytime fitnesses, they're struggling because none of them actually own the property. They're paying really high amounts of rent for the properties. Like, and, and if you own the property, you can monetize so much more because you don't have to ask for, for permission from the landlord to like sell food on the property, right? You don't have to, you just do whatever you want if you own the property. And they're like, I even saw, um, I was watching Shark Tank and there was this uh, pitch recently where there was like this like milk vending machine. And it's like, it gives you like tons of different kinds of milk, you know, for like people who like want almond milk or this kind of, and you can make it into like protein shakes and all that stuff. And it's like a vending machine that did it. And it's like, it was so cheap and like, uh, like that's such a useful thing. Like I would so use that if I went, I wouldn't need to bring protein shakes or anything like that. I would just pay like a dollar or whatever for like a really good protein shake while I'm already there. I wouldn't need to go back home and make one or whatever. And that like, you just charge the vending machine like a thousand dollars to be in there. Boom, there's more money. They Like they can make m so much money. It's unbelievable like, 
how much they're missing out on. And it's like, I should have access to all of these things, regardless of which anytime fitness I go to. Like I should be able to go to California, walk in at 3 a.m. and go to like the hot meals thing, which they have it, and just scan the QR code on the app on my phone and it just drops the one I selected and just charges my card automatically and have it all connected to my account. But they don't do it and they spend so much money on getting employees to manage all this stuff, which they can cut out the cost of completely. And it's like a multi-billion dollar company. I don't know why they don't do it. And there's like, the reason why I'm like, I thought of this recently and yesterday I went to the gym and I was even thinking like, man, the music here sucks. Music at every gym sucks. Like imagine being able to control the music of the place, you know, with the app on my phone, like on Bluetooth or whatever. Like, let's say I go on the app and I can add myself to a queue where like I enter my, like the location is set because it uses my location on my phone to verify that I'm there. And then I connect to Bluetooth. Um, and that way you can't spoof your location because you have to be connected to Bluetooth. And then I can play music like through my phone and it'll play through the gym speakers, you know? Maybe that's like a higher tier, more expensive account that can do that. Or maybe it adds like, you know, it's $36 a month. Maybe like the, you know, the $70 a month, you know, account, which they don't have. They don't have any tiers. They only have one account. Maybe like the $70 a month can add themselves to the priority queue. So like there, there's like 10 people at the gym, right? And when the person who's controlling the music leaves, the next person gets added to the queue. Or if they have a premium account, they get put in the front of the line. Or even music promotion. There's such a like a um, opportunity for music promotion because there's speakers that play music nonstop. Whether someone's in the gym or not, the music is being played nonstop, and they just put it some generic radio station with no like offensive music on it. Basically, no cuss word music because they want as many people as possible. But every gym has like garbage music, so nobody's gonna complain if you play different music, you know, because it can't get any worse. So. Like, just let people pay. Yeah, basically just like let people pay to add, like, be like, okay, this is the Anytime Fitness playlist, right? It has, you know, 500 songs in here. It's Spotify playlist. You can pay on the website to put your song in here and you pay every single day that it's on this playlist. Then when you stop paying, it gets removed from the playlist and people can add their songs on the playlist and each gym will just run through that playlist. So that way people can promote their songs. And they could just charge people so much to put their music on there because tons of people want to promote music or they could charge like um, there's a bunch of TVs in there. So they could charge like people to promote their visuals, like their YouTube channels or their live streams, their fitness content and all that stuff. That's basically like a legal view bot if you really think about it. And when I started thinking about like all the things that they could do where I thought to myself, like, OK, if I was in a room with the owners of Anytime Fitness, what would I pitch them? Dude, there's so much stuff. They could sell ashwagandha, which is like a thing that a lot of gym people use now. They could sell coffee. And like, cause ton, tons of gym people want to use coffee like before their workout to get more energy or like tea or green tea. And they could sell athletic clothes. And uh, you know, they could have an area there for like a vendor to have like a stand. Like, okay, here's all the clothes and bottles and here's like things that you can buy. They could just charge him a couple hundred dollars a month just to keep it there. Boom, that's like the whole electricity bill covered. They could, you know, sell vitamin D3 supplements. They should, because, you know, because they're so, um, it's a very like small place. It's a very, uh, uh, like, a, it's a place that you go to, like, even to like hang out with my friends sometimes um, and just like, you know, plug my phone to the wall and just charge it and just listen to music and that sort of thing. Like, it's that kind of place. So like, and because it's open 24 hours, it never closes. They could literally have like a bunch of COVID tests there. They could put ATMs there. Like it shouldn't just be a gym. This is the great thing about Anytime Fitness because in its essence, it's not just any time, it's also any place. And like, it could, imagine it being like, you know, CVS Pharmacy closes, Walgreens closes, all these other pharmacies close. But imagine like the basic things like health wise, like if I need, you know, Mucinex, if I need some like over the counter medicine or like, NyQuil to like go to sleep or whatever, right? I could just go to, you know, the Anytime Fitness and they'll have like a small stand on the side with all these like basic over-the-counter medications, you know? Because like, you know, these things don't need, um, you don't need a like a prescription to sell these things. Like they sell them on Amazon and all that stuff. It can be done. And uh, like the CVS here, right next to where I live, literally closes at 11. And I go to the gym at 11. 
if I like, I could go there and like buy fiber one bars or maybe buy deodorant or bug spray and things like that. There's like tons, tons of like a uh, potential to like innovate. Like uh, the same way Japan innovated with their like convenience stores for gas stations. And now they sell like whole like meals and like ramen and all this stuff in their gas stations and like better meals than most restaurants and like it's convenience stores. So that's basically all people do. They don't even go to uh, supermarkets anymore. They just go to the gas station convenience store and buy everything they need. The same way you can really innovate on like a gym, particularly Anytime Fitness because there's so many of them and because their business model is 24 hours all the time anywhere in the United States. Like there's just there's so many ways to innovate. And the first thing that needs to be done, it's such an easy thing for them to do is to make a better app. Just make better software and everything else will follow. It's it, like make it so that people can sign up for memberships on their phone. You know, it took me like an hour to sign, sign up for my membership and I had to talk to an employee and go to them in person on office hours and all that stuff while the employee was not busy doing other stuff. Like if I could just sign up from the, my app, they would get so many more customers. I don't know why they don't do it. They're like, th their management is so stupid. And like, it blows my mind that they don't like, you know, no gym sells like, you know, high protein, uh, you know, protein shakes, like 40 gram protein shakes and all that stuff. No gym does that. I've been to so many gyms. None of them do that. They all sell like very low fat, low protein because everybody has to be all health conscious. But just like so many people want these like milk cartons with like 60 grams of protein milks in there. You can sell them for like $2 a pop. That sounds like totally reasonable for people to buy. And milk is super cheap. Make it like a diluted protein shake. That's like actually extremely lucrative. A gal an entire gallon of milk is $4. Milk is literally cheaper than gas right now. It's so cheap to make these like protein shakes. <clears throat> All they have to do is like <clears throat> just sell it. It makes no sense for them to not to. They could sell like 15 gram protein bars. Wait, what? What if, what if we get a vending machine and 